Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at combining loops and logic. More specifically, we're going to take a look at how to nest the conditional statements if, else, and else if inside of a for loop. First, I'll introduce you to the problem, then we'll take a look at a flowchart to help visualize the various paths that our program can take. Finally, we'll implement our problem inside of the MATLAB environment. This video is the fourth and final part in a four-part series on for loops. So if you're not sure what a for loop is or how they can be used to perform scalar operations, then I'd recommend checking out parts one and two. If you're unfamiliar with working with arrays or array indexing inside of a for loop, then I'd recommend checking out part three. A link to parts one through three can be found in the description below. Let's get started. In this problem, we're going to write a script file to plot the function y where y is equal to the square root of 2 times x when x is greater than 10, y is equal to 3x plus 4 when x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 10, and finally y is equal to 50 when x is less than 0. And we're going to do this using a for loop. So let's jump straight into the code. First, we're going to initialize our variable x, which in this case is a row array with a starting value of negative 10, a step value of 2, and a final value of 20. Next, we count the number of elements in, an, in our array with the length function. And in this case, our row array x has a total of 16 elements. Next, we're going to start our for loop. So we start with our loop variable, which is serving as an array index. Our loop variable or array index has a starting value of one, an incremental or step value of one to move to the next element, and a final value of 16 which is the last element in the array. Next, we can move on to our conditional statements, if, else if, and else. So if our current value of x is greater than 10, then y is evaluated as the square root of 2 times x. Else if x is greater than or equal to 0, then y is evaluated as 3 times x plus 4. And this is somewhat interesting because notice we only checked if x was greater than or equal to 0 and not if x was less than or equal to 10. The reason that we did this is because we actually already know that x is not greater than 10 from our initial if statement. Then finally, we get to our else statement. Else if x is less than 0, then y is equal to 50. And that's the end of our for loop. So let's take a look at a flow chart to demonstrate each loop pass. We begin by initializing x, our row array, and n, which is equal to the total number of elements inside of x. Next, we check the current value of our loop variable, or our array index, which is equal to 1, and that is not greater than 16, the total number of elements inside of the array, so that statement is false and we evaluate x. Now, in this case, the first element in our array x is equal to negative 10, and that is not greater than 10, so that is false, and we've checked our first if statement. 
Next, we get to our else if statement where we see is x greater than or equal to zero. And again, the answer to this question is no. That statement is false. So now we're at our else statement and our variable y is assigned the value of 50. So 50 is the value in the first element in our array for y. Next, we increment our loop variable or our array index by one. Now our loop variable has a value of two and now we're going to be moving on to our second loop pass. So we're going to go through several loop passes here where each time y is evaluated as 50. So here is our second loop pass, our third loop pass, our fourth loop pass, our fifth loop pass, and finally our sixth loop pass. Now this time we're going to follow a slightly different path. In our current value of x is 0, and that's not greater than 10, so this statement is false. But our current value of x, which is 0, is greater than or equal to 0, and that statement is true. So now y is evaluated as 3 times our current value of x plus 4. We increment i by 1 again. And again, we'll go through several more loop passes where we evaluate y as 3x plus 4. So this is loop pass 8, loop pass 9, loop pass 10, 11, and 12. Now when we get to loop pass 12, our current value of x is 12, which is greater than 10, and that statement is true, and so now we're evaluating y as the square root of 2 multiplied by our current value of x. And this remains true for the remainder of our loop passes. So we have loop pass 14, loop pass 15, and loop pass 16. Now at the end of loop pass 16, we increment i by 1, and our loop variable or array index has a value of 17. Now there are not 17 elements inside of our array, there are 16, so now this statement is true, and our for loop ends. So now let's take a look at implementing this problem inside of MATLAB. Now that we're in MATLAB, our first step is going to be to open up a new script file. And this opens our editor, and we're ready to begin. We start our program by initializing x, that is our row array, which has a starting value of negative 10, a step value of 2, and a final value of 20. And what this does, it sets up a row array that starts at negative 10, then goes to negative 8 and negative 6, increasing in increments of 2 until we get to the final value of 20. Next, we want to determine the number of elements inside of this array, and we do so using the length function. And the length function counts the number of elements inside of our array x. Now we're ready to begin our for loop. So we type 4, i is serving as our loop variable and also an array index. 
which has a initial value of one because we want to refer to the first element inside of X, a step value of one so we can move from the first element to the second element to the third element and so on and so forth until we get to the final element which is in. Now we're ready to begin our conditional statements. So we start off with if our current value of x is greater than 10, then y of i, that refers to the current value of y, is equal to the square root of two times our current value of x. Next, we begin our else if statement. Else if our current value of x is greater than or equal to zero, then our current value of y is equal to three times our current value of x plus four. Finally, we end with our else statement where we do not have any additional criteria to check. And our current value of y in this case would be assigned the value of 50. Now we need to end our set of conditional statements, if, else if, and else. So I'm going to click enter and then type end to close off our conditional statements. And we actually need to add a second end statement here for the for loop. Now we're going to generate a plot of y as a function of x to help us visualize if our for loop is functioning correctly. So we're going to plot, we use the plot command, our independent variable x and our dependent variable y. We'll go ahead and add an axis title to each axis. So we use x label to add an axis title to the x axis. We use y label to add an axis title to the y axis. And finally, we can use the title function to add a title to our plot. So I'm going to do y as a function of x. Now we're ready to run our program. So I'm going to click run. I'll give our file a name. In this case, I'm going to use for underscore loop four. I'm going to click enter, which saves the file, and then it will immediately run. And we can see that a figure pops up here with our plot. And um, this looks good, and here's kind of why. We can see that between negative 10 and zero, we have a value of 50 for y, okay? Then between zero and 10, we have a linear increase, which makes sense. Okay. And that's because that equation was y is equal to 3 times x plus 4. That is the equation of a straight line. And then once x exceeds a value of 10, we switch over and we see that we're increasing here with the square root of 2 times x. And that would be from a value of 11 all the way up until 20. So our program is definitely functioning correctly. Thanks for watching. You can find me at David Calamus on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you liked this video and would like to see more, subscribe below.